Hello, everyone, and welcome to yet another uh, LinkedIn Live with the ICF, International Coaching Federation. Today, we have a very exciting topic to talk about, and it is technology and especially artificial intelligence and coaching. It's a hot topic, and as you well know, many different opinions about the um, uh, appropriateness of using AI, the uh, effectiveness of using it, how do coaches and how do clients react to this uh, rather fast growing field of artificial intelligence and coaching. And today I'm very lucky to be joined by two experts in the area that will help us have the conversation about this topic. First, I'm very happy to introduce Joel DiGirolamo, uh, who is my colleague at ICF, and he is a Vice President of Research and Data Science for ICF. Joel holds a master's degree in industrial and organizational psychology, an MBA, a bachelor's degree in uh, elect electrical engineering, go figure, and uh, he is an associate editor for Consulting Psychology Journal. Welcome, Joel. Thank you. And um, my other guest is Dr. Nikki Trimblanche. Uh, he is a head of the MPhil Leadership Coaching Program and senior lecturer and research supervisor on the MBA and PhD programs at the Stellenbosch Business School in South Africa. His academic interests include leadership coaching and information system. He also runs an executive and leadership coaching practice himself. He does have a Master of Philosophy in Management Coaching, Engineering, another engineer in Electronic Engineering, and PhD in Business Management. So the reason we invited Nikki is that his research interests include artificial intelligence and machine learning in coaching and management, transformative learning in coaching, social network analysis, and complexity theory. He is very well published and he published in a number of international academic journals and regularly presents at international conferences. Uh, he also is a founder of a company, a coaching. Uh, so uh, many, many um, um, inventions coming from that particular field. So we are delighted, Nikki, that you um, that you join us today. Thank you for inviting me. I'm looking forward to it. So, gentlemen. Will AI take over coach's job? <laughs> Joel, where do you, Joel, where do you, you sit on that? <laughs> well, actually, I think I think let's let, let's let Nikki go first on this. Okay, one. Nikki, you've been put on the spot. <laughs> yes, indeed. Will AI take over coach's jobs? I think this is a burning question on, on everyone's mind. I think mm. the question is broader, and the question is: Will AI take over human jobs in general? and what type of jobs. And I think the short answer is that AI um, will may take over some aspects of human coaching, and we can elaborate on that later. But generally, I see AI as an incredibly powerful tool to help human coaches and to help organizations and to help trainers who train human coaches, um, not taking over, but an augmentation. Although mm. some people should be worried. And we'll get to that later. <laughs> yeah. And, and All right. So, so the suspense, suspense builds, <laughs> Joel. We're, well, we're it, and to add to that, we, you know, it's going to take more computing power and and more technology to get uh, to where it could begin to take over our jobs. And if we look at the high levels of coaching, where where coaches are very experienced and very masterful in how they coach. The, the AI coaching isn't there yet, and I don't think it's going to be there anytime soon. Okay. So, so um, quite frankly, we already see some applications of AI in coaching, right, already. Um, I mean, most coaches do use some kind of uh, assessments. Many of them are AI-powered uh, uh, algorithms. So what, what do we know at this point about technology and especially artificial intelligence as a, 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 and its application to coaching. What, what do we know? 
I think maybe to answer that question, if I can go first, Jill, is to is to give some examples, Magda, like uh, you alluded now, to where AI is currently being used. So um, the, the one that I've been working with for the last five years is to um, create AI algorithms and um, machine learning algorithms that can mimic a human coach, so that can do some aspects of what a human coach does. And I've created a, a coaching chatbot, and many of the uh, viewers might be familiar with chatbots. When you go to some websites, it's a little window that pops up and says, hey, can I help right. you? And you don't know if you're talking to a human or, or a machine, right? So I created um, something called Coach Vici. Um, it's a chatbot that um, uses goal theory and the good old grow model, right? The one on, one on 101 of, of coaching. And um, it can help people with goal attainment. So, and, and the research we can talk about later showed remarkable results. So that's one example of, of using AI. But AI can also be used, for example, in training coaches. Uh -huh. um, there's a, a company that I came across recently that I'm helping with research called Ovida.org mm. um, that uses AI algorithms to analyze coaching conversation. For example, if I'd be coaching you now, it will analyze my coaching approach and give me very helpful feedback, um, similar to what a human supervisor can do. So those are two examples that I know of currently uh, where AI is making inroads um, in, in coaching. Yeah, and it, it, it's remarkable how well some of these technologies work. I know, um, you know, we happen to use one, uh, a chatbot as well. And it's interesting because I don't know, a year ago or some, so somebody suggested that we, we get an, an AI chatbot uh, to help us with our productivity. And we're like, uh, we have that and you haven't noticed. <laughs> right. Felicia, right? We have yes. Felicia, that's right. That's our supporter yeah. on ICF staff. <laughs> yeah, so the technology's come a long way. Yeah. So, so Nikki, um, you did tease us a little bit saying some people should be worried. Uh, some coaches should be worried with the with the uh, greater acceptance and um, application of AI. Who should be worried? So let me take uh, let me take you a step back, maybe to sh tell you briefly about my research. So Absolutely. We did a, uh, you know, because then I'll, I can answer the question. So coaching <laughs> is uh, coaching has progressed tremendously in the last ten years because of research. I, as an academic researcher, I'm very passionate about knowing um, what we can claim because we have evidence for it. So in that regard, we did a one year randomized control trial, longitudinal study, uh, and that's the gold standard. So we have two groups. One group has an intervention, the other group uh, does not have. In this case, we gave one group of 100 people, this coaching chatbot of mine, Coach Vici. The other group got nothing. We measured their goal attainment for uh, over 10 months. We also measured their resilience, their stress levels, and um, their levels of anxiety. Mm. And what we found was after 10 months, the people that used the chatbot did not see a reduction in anxiety and, and well, uh, an increase in wellness and, and stress, but they did see a significant increase in goal attainment. Um, so the conclusion we draw from that is that um, if because AI is very unintelligent at the moment, to be honest. We have to, <laughs> we have to focus our solutions on something very narrow, such as goal attainment, for example. And for mm. that narrow aspect that the AI is programmed, it can be very effective. So long story short, the people that should be worried are coaches who coach very simplistically. We use a two or three step model who, who are not engaging in the complexity that we can as humans because my research has shown that a grow model and basic goal attainment can be done as effectively because we compared it to a human coaching study as humans. So I think it's mm. a call for coaches to up their level of training and, and engagement in coaching. Yeah, I think that's something that we keep talking about um, at ICF, that this continuous learning is something what is so important in the coaching field. But to your point, Nikki, that also calls for the coaching educators and standard setters such as ICF to, to pay keen attention uh, to that aspect as well. Um, 
and you could see on the screen that that we hosted a, a poll on Instagram and LinkedIn group and we asked the question how do you feel about AI in coaching and the opinions are quite different uh, some people say yes I'm excited and already using it others are saying I embrace it as inevitable future that's a little bit like you know resign to the fact right uh, <laughs> some say I don't much care about it and others I said I think it's a seriously bad idea interestingly enough many coaches well nobody actually uh, in the coaching group said I think it's a seriously bad idea. I wonder if this is because it is inevitable future or because coaches do see a, a good application uh, in, in their work. And much to you said, it could be it could be an accelerating force for the effective coaching engagement. What do you gentlemen think about that? Yeah, I think I think the AI coaching actually may uh, increase the market for human coaches, because what could happen is, as Nikki's pointed out on, on the low end, that people could get some experience with the AI coaching and, and they they get value from it, they attain some goals and they, they think, wow, this is, this is really cool stuff. This is really helpful. And I think I want a human coach now. <laughs> and, and so I think it, it really could uh, grow the market. Uh -huh. Nikki? Yes, definitely. I think, um, you know, as soon as people realize that AI is not a threat, it's a tool right. like any other tool. And we all use technology uh, in our coaching. It's a tool. But I think that brings us probably to an important point that it is a powerful tool and we have to be careful about how it's being used because it's more powerful than other tools, especially from an ethical perspective. I think that is mm. something that you have to be very aware of. Yeah, that's a that's a great great segue because at ICF and Joel is in fact leading this effort. We just created a coalition of uh, organizations uh, and and a platforms that utilize AI to um, to support coaching and to support coaching engagements and ethics is one of the most important aspects that we are looking. Ed. So, Joel, do you, do you care to say a little bit more about the coalition? Sure. And you know, we're, we're kicking off a coalition of the platforms to look at what kind of standards should we create in terms of ethics and privacy of data, uh, uh, because there, there could be a, a whole lot of issues there. And we believe that that can help the profession. It can help the developers to understand what's important to them and, and what they want to be developing for. I also want to mention that we've been working on the, some AI coaching standards for the last year, and Nikki's been instrumental in that effort. And we have a set of guidelines for the AI coaching. And already we have heard comments from developers saying, wow, there's some stuff in here that we hadn't even considered. And, and so it's helpful to the developers from that aspect, and it's, but it's also helpful to the consumers, the the users of that technology that they can feel like, oh, I can I can trust this, or you know, I know that there's been some rigor behind this, so that's helpful as well. Yeah, we see so many different platforms currently being present in the marketplace. Of course, many of them being more popular and the names being more recognizable than than others. Um, and the uh, I think, Joel, what you just uh, said, um, both the developers, the providers already, and the consumers have, have questions, have questions about uh, what do I need to pay attention to? What do I need to make sure of? Uh, and I think I think the ethics and we saw it in other fields that typically the the te technology progress is faster than the ethics and the um, uh, well the business practice around it right. So uh, what we've heard so far is that there is a uh, uh, quite a quite an interest in especially data confidentiality. Uh, and also how the data are being collected and possibly used and for what. 
so so let's just go halloween is coming let's just go a little bit into conspiracy theory what what do you think is a potential um potential danger is probably too strong of a word but the concern a concern in a in a broader use of artificial intelligence in coaching I think there, there are a number of well-known um, potential ethical dilemmas, which, by the way, is not unique to, to AI and coaching. Exactly. I think we mustn't think that we're the first people to use AI. Unfortunately, <laughs> we're not. Um, they, they are the, the GDP are standards in, in, um, in Android to help control right. this. But one of, the, one of the concerns would be, for example, bias. It's a word that's used quite a lot. Remember, when you train an AI, you train it on a data set. And that data set could have biases in it. There's the classic example of, of a large company that used previous data to train an AI algorithm to do recruitment. And then the, the algorithm ended up favoring men above women. Same CV, if you're a male, you, you get the job. If you're female, not. And the reason was that it was because of the training data that was biased. So that's one. But then, Joel, you'll remember when we attended the PSYOP conference in Seattle um, earlier this year, um, it was said that at least with, with machines, you can spot the bias and correct it. With humans, it's very difficult to change bias. Right? So there's also a positive aspect uh, to that. But for sure, so if people are interested in using AI in the organizations, they have to ask the right questions. They have to ask, um, is the algorithm transparent? They have to ask about data privacy. They have to ask about, um, I think, importantly is there evidence to back up the claims and that's where research coaching chatbot at least is backed up by research and with Ovida um, that does the coach training we're embarking on a, a large scale using 600 people a large scale research project to see whether this platform really to what extent it can improve um, coaching skills so I think there are a number of questions and Joel, uh, the framework we've developed uh, touches on the ethical aspects as well quite uh, right yeah and related to that or what can that data be used for right. um, can in the technical term is derivative works and and how can what uh, rights do the clients and the coaches give to the to the AI coaching platform to use that data to develop some assessments or some tools and and that's a, a really important issue as well mm -hmm. yeah most definitely so um i am quite fascinated in this aspect of um ai being used to train coaches in fact another long time ago we had a meeting of the icf board and especially the group um that deals with uh, credentials and standards and also with coaching education were just fascinated about the application of um, AI into coach training and and Nikki you already mentioned that there is a provider that uh, that offers this service um, and, and and especially this this question of bias because yeah uh, uh, unfortunately there are only too many examples of great products being developed only to find out that the that the data provided uh, to teach the the artificial intelligence was somewhat biased or maybe not biased simply historically there were cer certain aspects that were not taken into consideration so do you think i love what you said that the, the, it can be spotted and it can be fixed with, with the technology less with the people so so do you see a greater application of ai into coach training or coach delivery or or both i think it's, it's such an exciting new field that we really don't mm. know where, where the things are there are there are a few providers that are really doing cutting edge stuff um, so at the moment it's difficult to see where, where where it will go but in those two aspects specifically in coach training as well as um, providing coaching um, i think we have we have huge potential um, specifically in terms of scaling coaching, um, coaching available. Companies want to give coaching to everyone, not just to the executive level. Right. They want to give it to more people, but it's expensive. 
Um, in South Africa and on the African continent, um, you know, there, there's not a lot of money going around for things like coaching. So at a fraction of the cost, you could use an AI coach to deliver a small portion of coaching, not the full suite, but a right. small portion. And with coach training, you know, on our program, um, it's expensive to use human supervisors to, to help mm. um, students. But with this um, Ovida platform, for example, and I'm using it as one example, um, you, the student can in their own time um, record a session, have it analyzed, amazing. So the point I want to make is I think we must not be too worried. I'm saying something controversial now. I think the upside, the upside of AI in coaching outweighs the potential risks of um, data privacy and security and all of that. And I know, I know it's controversial. I think, you know, we're exposed to these risks anywhere uh, in any way. And coaching yeah. is confidential, but I think the upside potentially is enough that we should not stop exploring. Yeah, I think you're, you're reflecting very well the, the, the position of ICF. Uh, and even as, uh, as our little um, poll showed, even if people are not super excited about it, they realize it's here to stay and we just may as well um, embrace it, right? And, and um, uh, put some safety measures around it as it, as it grows rather than pretend that it doesn't exist or, or pretend that we can stop it from, from development. Joel, what, what, exactly. what comes to mind? <laughs> I, I agree with that wholeheartedly. And I, I believe that, as Nikki's pointing out with like um, the Ovita platform and, you know, his platform. So, you know, here, here's a kind of a bifurcation of the, of the technologies already that you've got a very specialized one in terms of training. Mm. And then you have the broader AI platforms that are, you know, looking at, um, you know, Nikki used the term democratization of coaching right. um, that, that can bring coaching to more people. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, What's the next one? What's the next area that this will go into? And we don't know. We we don't know because the technology is moving so quickly. So quickly, yeah. But it, it's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh, we're coming to an end of our time, but I, I really wanted to ask your opinion because I think we all said it's exciting. Uh, it's it's definitely here to stay. And, and yet there are could be some guardrails, right? So that it doesn't go somewhere where it starts being scary and is a is a uh, scenario for some sci-fi movie, but instead is still uh, helping and and bringing about the results that we all would like to see. So what what do you need? What do you think is a responsibility of researchers? like yourself and and for ICF, the professional bodies for coaching, what, what is our responsibility, but even more importantly, our ability to support the healthy, I use the term loosely, the healthy growth of the application of AI in coaching? What, what, what comes to mind? I'm glad you mentioned both aspects because I think the coaching bodies like ICF and Comensa in South Africa and UCC and all the rest, they all have a very crucial role to play. Um, mm. And I think the first step is to acknowledge that AI is a serious entrant and player in the field. It's not going to go away. It's going to grow. And keep doing the great initiative that Joel started with um, the, the, you know, the framework. Um, so I think also the coaching bodies must make their members aware of what AI is. Um, so education, education of coaches and also of organizations. So I think that is one aspect. Um, so more resources. So look at your budgets and funnel more funny money towards towards AI um, credentialing and, and and research. I would like to call on all academics, on researchers in, in universities to take this serious. Um, I'm one of the very few people at this stage that have published papers on AI research. I want to see an explosion of it because it's only through peer-reviewed academic process that we can see what it's capable of and what not. And wow. I think because AI is um, something you can create and, and work with easier than human coaches, it's cheaper to do research, for example. I think we can very quickly get to a level of maturity that's far more difficult 
to do in human coaching in terms of efficacy and, and application. Mm -hmm. That's that's awesome. Joel, think, what say you? I think I think that's a really good point uh, about in terms Nikki in terms of efficacy and and you know building up the profession because um, you know when we talk about that the the AI coaching can you know be using these models and it can be um, helping in that area and that aspect. And so what that will do is that will bring more maturity to the, to the profession, to the curricula mm. uh, of the coaching education programs. And, you know, Nikki and I share our engineering backgrounds. And, <laughs> and you know, when I learned electrical engineering, when I was getting educated, I learned like twice as much as my father did when he was in the program. And it wasn't because I was smarter, but it was because there were more schemas, there were more models, we learned more quickly. And that's what we're seeing here. And, and that's what we'll be seeing playing out over the next two, three, five years. And I think it's fantastic. It's really gonna, really gonna help uh, mature and grow the profession. Yeah, that's fantastic. Uh, I think I think this is not the first time that we're talking, gentlemen, about this stuff, this particular uh, uh, topic. And uh, thank you, Nikki, for for playing with ICF on the research side. I applaud your call to action to professional bodies and to researchers alike. And uh, and again, thank you both for joining us today for this LinkedIn Live. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you.